Before starting this video, I do want to give a thank you to my patrons that support the channel. And if you would like to support the channel, there are some great benefits for you in the link down below. So with that, let's get into today's video. Hey what's going on YouTube, this is Devin coming back at you with another video today on Pups on PimpTG. Today I'm ranking my top 10 commanders from the new set Wilds of Eldraine. Normally when I make these top 10 videos on commanders, I usually base these commanders off of a couple different things like flavor, power level, uniqueness, and overall at the end of the day it's going to be my opinion that's going to base these rankings. There's a lot of different commanders in this set. If there's not a commander that you see that is deserving to be in the top 10, let me know down below in the comments. I'd love to hear your feedback. So with all this prefaced and out of the way, let's get on to the top 10 commanders of Wilds of Eldraine. I am going to start with an honorable mention at first. So this character is one of the main heroes in this set with Kellen the Fey Blooded. The reason why I have it as an honorable mention is because it's kind of doing that normal Boros thing. So as far as originality goes, it's not really quite there. He's doing the typical Boros equipment or aura theme and honestly I'm not really digging it as much. However, it is pretty powerful though. It is a tutor as an adventure side. You search your library for an aura or equipment card and reveal it and put it into your hand. He does also have double strike. Other creatures you control get plus one plus zero for each aura and equipment attached to Kellen the Fey Blooded. So again, it's going with that Boros equipment theme and Honestly, it's been done over and over again. I'm kind of tired of it and would like to see something new for Boros. But again, I did want to give it a mention because he is a tutor in the command zone that is pretty powerful just in itself. So with that said, I'm going to move on to my number 10 spot. This one is pretty unique overall because it kind of does something not a lot of commanders do and get a benefit off of, and that's freezing your opponent's creatures with Hilda of the Icy Crown. So for 4 mana, whenever you tap an untapped creature and opponent controls, you may pay 1. When you do choose 1, you create a 4-4 white blue elemental creature token or you put a 1-1 counter on each creature you control, or you scry 2, then draw a card. So obviously, whenever you tap an opponent's creature, kind of freezing them with like Hilda's staff or something, I don't know, I'm kind of just making it up as I go, but whenever you freeze an opponent's creature, you're essentially getting a benefit by putting a body on the battlefield, buffing up your bodies, or even uh, drawing some cards. So, so I feel like in an overall grand scheme of things, this is a pretty interesting commander, kind of going with that tap your opponent's creatures to get some benefit. So nice card. I don't feel like it's quite worthy of, of the rest of the cards. However, it did deserve the top 10 spot. So let it go. Let's move on to the number 9 spot. This one is more flavor, if anything else. I don't think it's quite powerful. However, flavor is... Reasons. I feel like Sir Ginger the Meal Ender deserves my number 9 spot. I wish I could have put it up further, however the power level is not quite there because it is a colorless commander. You don't have any other colors to rely on. But I will say the flavor is off the chart with Sir Ginger the Meal Ender. It does have that ability of Trample, Hexproof, and Haste as long as that opponent controls a Planeswalker. So flavor reasons, Garrick uh, killed her boyfriend, spoiler alert, and uh, that's why she has the hatred towards Planeswalkers. Also on top of that, whenever another artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you put a 1-1 counter on Sir Ginger and Scry 1. So with this one, again, I feel like it's very interesting. I mean, it does have the other ability of pay 2 and tap it, sacrifice Sir Ginger. You gain life equal to its power. So overall, I mean, it's very flavorful, don't get me wrong, but I don't feel like it's quite powerful. That's the reason why I had to give it the number 9 spot, but honestly, I love it so much nonetheless. So I'm at number 8 spot. It's a very interesting situation because I would put it higher. However, I felt like there's other contenders that were better. I do have Will, Scion of Peace. So for 3 mana, it does have Vigilance. So you can tap him. Spells you cast this turn that are white or blue cost X less to cast, where X is the amount of life you gain this turn, activated only as a sorcery. So the reason why I had it a little bit lower is because you have no real way to give him haste. And on top of that, I do feel like overall it's harder to gain life, uh, especially compared to losing life with Rowan. A little spoiler alert, Rowan is a little bit higher on the list. Don't get me wrong, I do feel like it's a very powerful ability, especially in white and blue where you can play a lot of X spells and if you gain a, a certain amount of life, your spells will cost X less to cast. So overall, I do feel like Will Sign a Piece is very powerful. However, I don't feel like it's as powerful or as flavorful or original as the other ones in the next spots of the list. 
So let's move over. Let's talk about my number seven spot. This one's a very interesting one because I decided last minute. I felt like this one was deserving. I do have Agatha of the Vile Cauldron. So overall, I just kind of forget. It's a two mana commander. It's very easy to get down maybe on turn one or even turn two. Just easy, just like that. Also on top of that, it has a array of abilities that are pretty good overall in your Stompy decks. So she does read activated abilities of creatures you control cost X less to activate where X is Agatha of the Vile Cauldron's power. This effect can't reduce the mana in that cost to less than one mana also she does have an activated ability of herself so it actually is reduced by one every single time so for four green and a red other creatures you control get plus one plus one and gain trample and haste until end of turn so i feel like this is a very powerful commander it has the win con built into her as long as you can keep dumping mana into her to make your creatures even bigger and bigger plus again she is only two mana to cast so honestly this is a very powerful commander in its own right so with that, I'm going to move on to my number six spot. This one's a very interesting one because it's more of a depowered version of Corvald with Corvald Gleeful Glutton. I know when everyone was first reacting to this version of Corvald, they're like, okay, this is nowhere near as powerful. And I would agree with them. However, this is still pretty powerful in my opinion because this spell will cost one less to cast for each card type among permanents you sacrifice this turn. So that's very easy to do whether you're sacrificing a treasure token, a fetch land on the battlefield, or even a creature on the battlefield. So with that eight cost, most likely it's not going to be that way because you're going to be sacrificing stuff to make Corvald cheaper. But he does have a good array of abilities of flying, trample, and haste. Just right there, you're always going to be swinging in with combat damage, especially having haste. On top of that, whenever he deals combat damage to a player, you put X 1-1 counters on Corvald and draw X cards where X is the number of permanent types among cards in your graveyard. So I would say in most scenarios, you're probably going to be drawing 1-4 to four cards because there's other card types that are not used as much, for example, like battles. So each time you deal combat damage with him, either with extra combats or even if you give him double strike, you're going to be drawing so much more cards and getting him bigger each time. So I feel like Corvold is pretty powerful overall. Not quite as powerful as his previous version, but nonetheless pretty powerful by itself. So with that, let's move on to my number five spot. This one was previewed a long time ago. However, I do feel like it's pretty powerful. Not really too unique, but powerful nonetheless with Talion the Kindly Lord. So Talion does have flying and when it enters the battlefield, you choose a number between one and two. 10, whenever an opponent casts a spell with mana value, power, and toughness equal to the chosen number, that player loses 2 life and you draw a card. I know there has been a large debate of deciding which number is the best to pick out of 1 through 10. I personally feel like, and I'm putting my number out there, I feel like 2 is the best number to choose. Mainly because there's a lot of two drops that you're going to be doing whether you're ramping with like nature's lore or 3 visits or with the talismans. On top of that, if you do have a creature that has power 2 or toughness 2 on the battlefield, you're just going to be drawing cards on top of that. I feel like Italian is going to be very powerful. Nonetheless, I do feel like it's not very original because at the end of the day, you're just making people lose two life and you're drawing a card. So I'm going to dive into my number four spot. This one is pretty unique because you're enchanting your opponent's creatures. I do like that idea with Area of the Charmed Apple. So for three mana, each creature that is enchanted by an aura you control can't attack you or Planeswalkers you control. Also, at the beginning of your end step, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life. Rex is the number of auras you do control. Also, I feel like the flavor text sums up this commander perfectly. Hush now, I need your beauty sleep. She's enchanting your opponent's creatures so that eventually you could gain life and your opponents will lose life. Essentially, you're draining their life essence so that you can make area even more beautiful. You don't even have to really enchant your opponent's creatures. You just have to have auras on the battlefield for that effect to go off. So I really do like what this commander is doing. Really flavorful in my opinion. However, it couldn't compete with my number three spot. This one I feel like is one of my favorite cards out of the set. You probably already know what it is, and that is the Goose Mother. I love this card so much because it's a bird hydra. Of course, it's it's just absolutely hilarious looking. But don't let the goofiness fool you because it is quite powerful. It does have flying. It enters the battlefield with X 1-1 counters on it based off of how much you paid into X. Also on top of that, it enters the battlefield with half X food tokens rounded up. And whenever it does attack, you may sacrifice the food. If you do, you draw a card. So let's just say you paid six into that ability. This bird will be an 8-8 on the battlefield and you would have three food tokens on the battlefield that you could sacrifice so that you could get some card draw. And if anything else, this is just a 2-2 body on the battlefield just for two mana with flying. And on top of that, if you do have some food tokens on the battlefield that you could sacrifice to get some card draw, more the merrier. But obviously the main draw of this card is just that it looks so goofy and I love it so much. It's more personal personal preference in my opinion so that's why it's on my number three spot 
However, my number two spot is definitely based off of power. This one is very powerful in the right type of deck. So with that said, I do have Rowan, Scion of War at my number two spot. It's not quite number one because I feel like the number one is a little bit more deserving in my opinion, but for three mana, it does have Menace. You can tap her, spells you cast this turn that are black or red cost X less to cast for X is the amount of life you lost this turn. Activate only as a sorcery. So for obvious reasons, this is very powerful. There's a lot of ways where we could just pay life for free to get our spells to be reduced. There's a lot of busted scenarios where Rowan Sign of War is pretty powerful. For example, when somebody plays a Necropotence and then they pay 30 life, then you tap Rowan and your spells are reduced by 30, then you dump it into a Torment of Hailfire for 30. However, I don't feel like it's super original. I mean, it's kind of original. It kind of feels more like Rakdos, Lord of Riots in a weird way, but instead of uh, giving pain to your opponents, you're giving pain to yourself. And on top of that, I feel like Rowan is pretty powerful. That's why I gave her my number two spot. Not necessarily because she's original, but mainly because of power strictly. However, at my number one spot, I feel like this was very deserving because it's very original, it's very powerful, and it kind of does everything I want in a commander. I do have Bernard Ginger Sculptor. So for one green, white, and a blue, he is a banned commander and a human artificer. Each creature you control that's a food or a golem gets plus two, plus two, and trample. So you do have an anthem for your food creatures or golem creature so that by itself is pretty powerful but on top of that he does have a better ability whenever another non-token creature you control dies you may exile it if you do create a token that's a copy of that creature except it's a 1-1 food golem artifact creature token in addition to its other type and it has pay two mana and tap it sacrifice this artifact you gain three life so first i do have to talk about the flavor of this commander it just looks like a cute old guy making gingerbread man however he's making his friends into gingerbread men so i don't know whether to be surprised or scared about that ability just alone by having his friends turn into gingerbread men but if anything else this is a great food or a golem tribal deck mainly because it has the anthem of giving them plus two plus two and trample also on top of that he does go infinite with Ashnod's altar and as well as eternal scourge so i feel like the flavor is there and also the power level is there that's why i do have it at my number one spot i do feel like i'm also going to be building this deck because of how fun it is it looks like it's going to be my christmas theme deck because he's making gingerbread bread men however that's gonna do it for me guys thank you guys so much for coming by and watching this video on the top 10 commanders of wilds of aldrain in my opinion let me know down below in the comments are there any commanders that are missing from the list that you would include or if there's a commander that you are excited about let me know down below in the comments i love to read your responses as i go through uh, the youtube page also make sure to like share and subscribe to the channel and with that out of the way thank you for stomping by